Now let's talk about complex things and that means complex security issues. And I like to start with session IDs which cannot be reused anymore. There's a little bit of story around that. Um, in the very past when we had first time uh, Starlink Connect, in these days it was named Connect for Cloud. Then uh, behind all of this was a very nice tool that was named Boomi. And Boomi was only able to handle one session ID. That means you connect it to Boomi with specific credentials. Then uh, uh, you was just doing something with that interface you created and on the first transaction there was a session ID and that session ID was sent back and with that session ID for this specific login all the complete traffic happened. From a security perspective this is a little bit unsecure and the reason for is that um, it is possible to capture such a session ID. Let me give you an, an idea how the whole thing works. There is your system and you connect to that system. You enter your credentials and you are fine, but you have limited access. You get back a session ID. If a tool can reuse session IDs, it is now possible to take this session ID and assign it to a login attempt from another person. For example, I am the hacker and I try now to assign this session ID to a request my colleague is doing. For example, from my PC and my colleague has more per permissions. If I can reuse sessions, then it is possible that this person, that means my colleague, gets permissions for the same session ID. That means the session ID originally created from my side. Which means that if I know this ID, once my colleague gets logged in, I can reuse again the session ID, this time with the permission set of my colleague and can start damaging the system. This is what people name session fixation attack. And this is possible if you can reuse these session IDs. We remember because of the old world of Connect for Cloud, it was necessary to be able to reuse session IDs. Now Connect for Cloud, it's redeveloped. It is now Starling Connect. And in Starling Connect, it is not necessary anymore to do something like that. And because of that, we implemented in the Identity Manager the feature that session ID cannot be reused. With that, we are safe for session fixation attacks because the no two transactions can have the same session ID and everything is good. Unfortunately, there might be the one or the other tool using the application server and have the same problem like the old system has I was talking about. And because of that, there is a configuration that can be used to switch on that old reuse thing again. But remember, if you do so, it is unsecure. And because of that, uh, you will implement a security breach. And this is the reason why that configuration parameter per default is turned off. If you are working with a web front and you use cookies and one identity manager is doing so, then it is important to, to ensure that these cookies cannot be sent to other portals. Because with that you can get information you should better not get. And so the cookie you create should only work with the web portal that was creating the cookie and it's using mainly the cookie. In the past, the configuration was allowing to send these cookie to other web fronts, which is then a cross functionality. And this is now prohibited with the new configuration, the web config, which is just setting the whole thing to a same side cookie. That means this cookie can only be sent to the same site which was generating the cookie, which is then our standard web portal. It's a little bit of security enhancement, but it is pretty helpful and it makes the whole thing again more secure. On the security side, we changed a little bit something with 7.1.3 or 8.0.1. We increased the capability of the system to use an RSA encryption. Key. And this key was in the past, pre the versions I named, a 1024 character long encryption key. As we in the meantime know, 1024 characters are not secure enough. It is possible to use machines uh, to decrypt that uh, just by a lot of calculation processes. And so it was necessary to increase that key size. That happens in these named versions 7.1.3 or 8.0.1. One thing left is that part of the story is 
that if I want to encrypt a small amount of data, then I have to ensure that this data gets a minimum length. And that minimum length is to by 2048. And I'm using something that is named asymmetric encryption padding. That means if something I want to encrypt is too small from the character size, then I can add some characters so that the whole thing gets a little bit more. This is part of the new RSA, which was implemented and it happens automatically. Because we have to be upward compatible, this specific functionality, it's using the good old P PKC1 standard, which is not using a padding and encrypts the whole thing, not that secure, just on the basis of a fallback. That means in total, I implemented the new RSA standard and I get the old encryption, which is more unsecure than it was in the past before I started to increase the RSA functionality. What's necessary to work around that? It is necessary to ensure that my database is encrypted and it is encrypted using the new RSA functionality. Why I'm talking so many things around it? The problem is the following. You encrypted your database a couple of versions ago, especially because you want to work very secure. And then the new change was to the new RSA version I was talking about. And then unfortunately the key wasn't upgraded. That means what we want to say here is to support that wonderful feature of padding, you must ensure that your database encryption is up to date. That means after you installed version 713 or 8.0.1, you have to decrypt your database using the old key. You have to encrypt your database, creating a new key. You have to change all these keys everywhere where server services are using them. And from this time on, you are now really safe. Very last thing short. As we know, we are shipping an RSTS tool with the Identity Manager DVD. This was upgraded to version 2019 1.1.11 and that is new. So if you use that tool from our setup DVD, then it's now the time to upgrade that installation as well.